topic. Welcome to the Church Sound Podcast, where kingdom culture, real life, and technology intersect. I'm your host, Prentice Thompson, along with the pastor, Caleb Winley. We're here to help you get through Sunday. Could you hear the pastor? What about your live streams, social media? We provide solid solutions for all of your multimedia needs. Let's learn something today. Let's go. Yes, welcome to another edition of the Church Sound Podcast. I'm your humble host, Mr. Prentice Thompson, along with the pastor. That's the Kayla Winley, guys. How y'all doing out there? We are excited about today. Y'all ready? We're excited about today. And excited. Excited. Be, uh, you're gonna need some Bacura cone. Bro. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna need some bandages. Yeah. Some yeah. sage. Yeah, sage. Some praying hands. <laughs> Um, well, today, welcome to episode. I know I'm just this is a little prerequisite. I'm just giving y'all a look at that. <laughs> let you know. Just Thank let you get ready. Know. Get ready. Get yeah, on the yeah. third rail today. And I say third rail, I mean the third rail. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to episode number 44. Now, I know that you don't know okay. the significance of 44. Uh, significance of 44. For, all right, so, so, so the significance of 44 from my perspective. From your perspective. From my perspective. 44. Uh, nah, I don't. I okay, when I was a... Wait, 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 wait. It's, it's got to be basketball. It's basketball, okay. It's okay. got to be basketball. Who was 44? I know Jordan wasn't. No. Chamberlain? No. No. Chamberlain. No. It's way, way before my time. <laughs> I ain't that old. That's way. <laughs> um, I I know it. It can't be, um, Black Mamba. It ain't him. No, no. Okay, no? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna help you out. Yeah, help me out, man. I'm, when I'm, I was I'm a kid, when I was a kid, every kid had this dude's poster on the wall. His name was the Iceman, George Gervin, number 44 of the San wow. Antonio Spurs. Yeah, he had, a, he had and um and you know, I'm pretty sure you're gonna put it, you know, he was he would sit on a bucket out, he sat on an ice block with two silver basketballs and the uniforms they were were like goldish, like gray. Oh and, like, he was, what? He That's sat the, on wait a minute. Seriously, he had he, he sat, sat he was on sitting like, on a, like his bucket. nickname was the Iceman. So, so he's, he he's sitting on, on a block of ice. Yo, that's dope. With two frozen basketballs. <laughs> that was the most famous poster, man. Ice Man George Garvin. What? The Ice that's Man. Dope. That's dope. Wow. I yes. gotta look that up. I gotta look that up. Yes, the oh, Ice Man George Garvin is like that. childhood yeah. favorite, childhood favorite. Anyway, that's crazy. welcome to episode number 44. 44 Before y'all. we get started, I need you to do three things. I need you to like. Subscribe, share. Let's do another one. Yeah. And a review. How about that? How about you review it? Yeah. How about you just take the time and go, you know what? I mean, just stop it. Right, like, stop it right now. Right. And just right. stop it. Go to review and just write something. It help us out. Yeah. If you're watching help on YouTube, right. subscribe, share, share the link with some people. Sure. Um sure. but definitely do that. Mm-hmm. And, the, and 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 on and on the on another note of paying bills. Right. We want you to check out our sponsor, Metro Podcast Studio, the hottest yeah. podcast studio in New York City. If you need yes, live streaming, quality audio recording, and video recording, post production, mm-hmm. podcast production, totally yeah. different thing, they can help. They can definitely help you out. Hit them yeah. up, MetroPodcastStudio.com. That's MetroPodcastStudio.com, and they will help you out with all of your needs: remote oh. recording, in studio recording. Great mm-hmm. facility. Hit them up. Great. They definitely Come take on, care of you. You may just sound like this. Just yes. like it. Just like it. If Episode you know. 44. Topic is. Come on. Before we get into sun, Sunday school, I gotta give you the gotta give you the topic. Oh, man. Wow. The topic is church hurt versus conflict resolution. I'm gonna say that again. Church hurt versus Conflict resolution. Wow, 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 wow. 
Y'all yeah, right? Everybody breathing? Everybody? I'm making sure I'm breathing. Everybody, everybody breathing because I just took the bandage. Shh. That just took off the bandage. It got real quiet. It ain't got real quiet. Everybody, you know, it's crickets and I, I you know, and I can't get no help in this sanctified church. Nah, come on. I can't bro. get no help here. You saw something about church hurt. Church hurt? People wake up. They're like, what? I feel yeah, like we, 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 we gonna talk. We're going to talk about what it is, how to get through it, and yeah. what are the tools to move you forward okay to to understand that it what it really is before we dive any deeper but okay. come before on we go we, we know you know what we do you know you, it. you know what we you do know it every week every single week pastor on the mic it. is the actual pastor it is the pastor that's right this yeah to, yeah, yeah so yeah. let's get ready for mm-hmm Sunday school. Yeah. Okay, class is time. That's what I'm talking about. about. How you guys feeling out there? We gonna get, get it. Go. Sunday school is on me. Come on. I got three points. Three, three points. points. Three points now. Three points. I'm gonna lay these three points on you. You gotta pick which one you like. Shut my number. No, it's between me and my brother right now. We gonna be picking, you know, and then we gonna see Shame how this whole thing rolls out. So my first point, my first point, my first point is nervous. Hallelujah. Woo. Nervous. How are you gonna say nervous? How, how are you gonna say hallelujah? Nervous? Like woo. <laughs> <laughs> nervous. Hallelujah. Okay. Come on. Okay. Come on. My interest is peak. Yep. The, the second point. Second point is broken Bible. Broken Bible. How can you break a Bible unless it's in the iPad? Give me, yeah, give me, give me bro. Crack screen. Oh, okay. You okay. got nervous and broken. Nervous you and broken. You're already. All right? I You're already now. preaching. <laughs> You're preaching. You know what I'm saying? Um, the third point. Hmm, which one do I want to say? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Maybe. We'll see which one we fix. Uh, drop it like it's holy. Hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Drop it like it's holy. You know the time it's holy, boy. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna go there. Come on, go. let that settle. Like, like, like <laughs> choir singers and flower bringers. <laughs> Doing furniture around. Right? Yeah, bro, for real, for real. All right, so that's your three points. Nervous yes, hallelujah, mm-hmm. drop it like it's holy, yep. and broken Bible. Broken Bible. I'm gonna mm-hmm. go with. Nervous Hallelujah for five forty nine ninety nine. Five forty nine ninety nine. Nervous Hallelujah. Come on, boys and girls, get yourself prepared to hear what I'm about to tell you because this is a good thing. Now, there's something that tends to happen with a preacher uh, uh, that 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 most of you probably see, but you never recognize that it's a uh, it's it's a byproduct of being nervous. As a preacher, I know because I've done it myself. So we're going to talk about this thing happening in an undisclosed location, in an undisclosed place on this planet. And it happened with somebody that if I said their name, you would be like, what? I know that person. And so I'm just going to take you through the process. So as we, as a media team, was recording uh, some people that were ministering in our church, you could find that after a certain point in time, when they didn't have anything to say, they got... They got caught up, they got nervous, and then all of a sudden everything was, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> glory that's to God. A, oh, yeah, yeah, that's called y'all me. <laughs> Yo, every, so like every time they would get to a place where they needed to pause or they needed to turn to the scripture, like, amen, yeah, I mean, hallelujah, you know glory to God. Uh-huh. And so as a people, what we son. tend to do is we began <laughs> to write them down. Mm. I just, what what Gl- glory to God amen so at the end of this particular person's sermon he said and I had to pull him to the side I said just just so that you know as an individual because of because we were broadcasting if anyone is paying attention you said amen in an hour span not even now 45 45 minutes in 45 minutes span, you said amen 265 times. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Stop the press. Stop the press. I'm telling you. Stop the press. It gets worse. It gets worse. worse. Cause I had I had, you know, I'm sitting there just Hold up, hold up. So you yeah, counted yeah, 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 yeah. it? You counted it? I had to count them. 
because what happens is I, if we was in a training season. So I was like, <laughs> I, I don't want people to, to oh move and leave our ministry like, and, and go do that somewhere two, else. Three, right. Four, right. Five. Exactly. 39, right. And slice. Right, too. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Five. Okay. Give it up. Oh, again? <laughs> but, bro, now this person had three sections. He had a section for amen. He had a section for going Oh, down. no. <laughs> yes, he did. And he had a section for hallelujah. That's why I said it's a nervous hallelujah. Because you only get, <laughs> you get nervous <laughs> and you lost your train of thought or you... You're trying to get. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Most pastors amen. don't like to hear space. Right? They go, amen. Uh, glory to God. You know what I mean? You know, all, all of these things. So when I went to his brother, I said, look, 265 times you said, amen. 102, 100 and something times you said, glory to God. And then you went above and beyond with your hallelujahs. You was like, Almost in almost in the two hundreds with just no how way. So in all of the time that you were ministering, this is what you kept doing the entire time. Hallelujah, glory to God, Amen. Where's your sermon, brother? <laughs> <laughs> you have no sermon. It means you weren't prepared. A lot of times, that's what happens, bro. Wow. Yeah, man. The countdown. This dude was on the countdown. Yo, like, it's yeah. just, it's just, hallelujah. Exactly. Glory to God. And it's funny because there was so many of them that they did. I had to assign people. Okay, you got glory to God. Oh, <laughs> you got God. amen, and I'm gonna take care. Of Hallelujah. <laughs> I cannot. No, bro. It, it happens though, if, and if we don't know, sometimes I think we don't know. I think we don't see it. You know what I'm saying? We don't realize that we're, we're using these words that are powerful words. Wow. <clears throat> Wow. That's crazy. That's wow. so crazy, man. But it, yeah, wow. but it was a learning experience. And I, 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 it's funny, I got to hear this brother minister some time later, and he actually had whittled them down a little bit, man. It was pretty good. A little bit. Not, not, <laughs> a little bit. But, a little yeah, bit. But he still the was in the hundreds. Exactly. <laughs> 45 minutes. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. It is. It is, bro. It is. Every path. And, it's, and you know what? It, it's culture. Right. It's culture. Right. If you grew up in a church where that's how they communicate, mm -hmm. like I always say, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. That's, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Was, <laughs> exactly. Word, word, son, word. Right. That's yep. the same thing. It, it is. It, it is. It, yep. the, the funny Body thing is like, you know what I realized? I know I'm off topic right now. No, no, please. You know what I realized when, as I got older, is that Fights would only start when people ran out of words. Right. That's when good. words, when you run out of words, that's yeah. when the fight starts. Yeah. But if you like can it. communicate, the fight normally doesn't start. Right. That's good. You know what I mean? That's it's really like, good, bro. Word, I can't. That's it. You know. <laughs> but hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> hold me back. <laughs> wow, that's it. Right I never thought of that, bro. That's good. Yes, yeah, so when the fight starts, think about it. All the fights you seem like get off really me, good. get off me, wow. word. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And then, then the fight starts. Yep. You know, back in the it was fighting. Now, but now it's like exactly. You know, I pass without the ratchet now. You know, he's <laughs> like, I'm tired of talking. I'm tired of talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going right to Instagram with this. Hold on, let me get my. Neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wrong. That's so wrong. Well, Sunday school, yo, that was a good one, bro. That was a, oh, okay. You pull one out. You pull that one out. Pull that yeah, one out. That was a good one yeah, because we gonna need some because <laughs> you know because you know laugh, laughter. Uh huh. Yeah, laughter's a yeah. medicine. Exactly. It sure yeah, is. Using medicine for this. So we're going to talk about this. Just show. rewind back to Sunday school. Just rewind back to Sunday <laughs> school. When you get, to a, you, you get to a sticky part, just rewind back. And say, I'm going to laugh all over again. For real, for real. So we're going to talk about episode 44. We're going to talk about church hurt versus conflict mm -hmm. resolution. And it's very important mm -hmm. for us to define what it is. So mm -hmm. Church hurt is a term that refers to the pain sometimes afflicted by religious institutions, a pain that distances 
suffers that from communities and from God. So people sometimes will mix that up with okay. personality. So it could be an institution, mm -hmm. could be a person. Sometimes it could be it, it could be not done on purpose. Sometimes right. it could be done on purpose. Right, right. Okay. So church hurt, people have to be involved in church hurt. Right. Yeah. You know, you do yeah. some walk out, you know, you get out the bed like, oh, I hurt my oh, church hurt. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I turn my ankle. Oh, that's church hurt. No, someone has to be involved. And the one thing I realized about hurt period relationships right are intertwined into hurt because you cannot be in relationship with somebody without true relationship without getting close without being vulnerable right and right. without exposing yourself right exactly you got to put it all out there you got to put it all out there yeah. now because church is a place where People hold people in a higher regard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel than they than anyone should. Yeah. And yeah. and and secondly, um people are still people. Exactly. So just how just like yeah. someone got on your nose at the job, mm -hmm. somehow somebody can get on your nose at the church. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But because you hold them in a higher regard. Right that you say, oh, how could that happen? You know, and then you use God as an excuse. What do you think about that, sir? I think that's so true. I think without them being able, it's just like the person on the subway that steps on your shoes, you don't know them. Mm -hmm. So you're a little more inclined to, at least I am, I'm a little more inclined to say, it's okay, no problem, and move it on. But because that person, you've walked with that person for over some time and you've, you've unveiled yourself to that person and this person may, especially if they hold a, 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 a level of leadership mm -hmm. and they, they do something that, whether it be accidental or it was intentional, because sometimes mm -hmm. church hurt comes from intentionality. True. You know, it can be an intentional thing but the Bible talks about how iron sharpens iron. So sometimes you can be hurt in church, but it was the sharpening. But you still got to be able to process and not look at the person and and then and then devalue the the person's mm -hmm. uh, anointing or their call mm -hmm. or to say that they're mean or that they're, they're they were wrong to do this. But in the case of where it's not intentional, um, then you got to be able to to look at that person and recognize that I got to give you grace. And mm -hmm. I think that many of us don't think of that because I know I don't. And I, and I, I'm, I'm just going to talk from my own, my own place and my own where I, there's been times I've been hurt in church and I was, for some reason, I felt like you shouldn't be hurting me. If anybody's got my back, you should have my back. If anybody's looking out for me, you should be looking out for me. Well, in all honesty, that person's not God. That person has the same issues. Everybody gets up and puts their pants on the same exact way, goes to the restroom the same way they do. Everybody does the same thing. And we're all inclined to be hurt, mm -hmm. to come to church hurt, and then to hurt somebody else. And it's it's just part of being human. I think that's just the, the, the human side of the kingdom. And I think that you're right. I think... You know, they don't, I don't think people necessarily always mean to do it, but sometimes it just happens. It just happens. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a, there's a few books out there. There's a book um, called, I'll, I'll put a, a link in the show link called book. It's called Wounded, Wounded in the Church. Mm. And they talk about the long lasting effects of, of of church hurt, which which could be um, rejection, shame, despair, loneliness, fear, and all of these things add up to your your mental right psyche. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um, like I give you a great example. I know someone who doesn't doesn't do well with conflict. Okay. 
You know what I mean? Right. I'm the type of person, I want the conflict because I want to know where you at. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like I'll push buttons. Sure. To see how you respond. Got you. Got you. So I want to see where you at. If you can, and if you can take it because when you when you when you when you when you're looking at going into a rough area mm -hmm. and you have to find out who who's with you I, I just maybe true. decide with so I would do this stuff to my son That's to see true. where his temperament was right right you know see right. can he handle it right because it's going to be a time yeah. when I'm not going to be around exactly and he has to be able to handle stuff on his own without right. falling on his face. If you're going to fall, you're going to, failing is part of life. It's, a, it's called it a process. It is, yeah. But being hurt is a personal thing. Yeah. And yeah. the bruise, it depending how close the person is to you. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just don't take um, opposition well. They don't mm -hmm. take constructive criticism well. Right. You may say the the couch is blue and they heard the sky is red. Right. Right. And he okay. said, no, that's not what I said. I said the couch is blue. Right. No, you said the couch, you said the sky is red. No, I said the couch is blue. Right, right. What you heard and what I said are two different things. Yeah. So then your filter is you're looking for it. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. So you have to determine how are you hearing? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that right? Mm -hmm. That's so true. You, you have exactly. to take self-evaluation. Right. You know what I mean? It's been times when I've been crushed in church, mm. fired, wow. suspended for, for stuff I didn't do. Right, 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 right. But it's the same thing if, it's the same, if it happened at a regular place of a, a place of worship. I mean, place of work. Right. You're right. You're right. Or in, in a relationship, you break up. Exactly. You know, exactly. That is devastating. Yeah. Like, I could be a straight buck. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was homeless. Wow. Wow, bro. Dude, I was homeless. Wow. I had no place to go. Wow. That's so. Imagine, imagine someone throwing you out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they know you have no place to go. Right, right. And they say they love you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, man. I, so I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's levels to this. And the reason why I'm saying this in, in this context is because your mohill could mm -hmm. be someone else's mountain. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Your little bump in the road could be the Empire State Building to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. leaders, we as as leaders, we have to take all those things into 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 context. Mm -hmm. But you got to know who you're dealing with. And right. sometimes you hurt people you don't even know you hurt them. Exactly. Oh yeah. 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 And there's been situations in my own life where as a leader in the church, um, was still immature in my emotions and how I dealt with certain things. I would blast people even in joking, you know, what I found, you know, cause you know, I grew up when I grew up, we did the dozens that was like a, a national pastime. Every time, Man, you know, listen. You yeah. know, exactly. But when you get into a church setting and the moment you put on a title, people tend to think that that's not you or that shouldn't come out of you. That should right. be happening right. from you. And sometimes that person's still that person. You know what I'm saying? They still haven't, I, I still needed to be delivered or at least to know when and who I could joke with like that. And I wound up saying something to somebody and it was months later, mm. literal months later. And this, this small thing, well, it was small to me, became a mountain for that person. And we was 
at an impasse. We couldn't even look at one another. And I was trying to figure out, well, what's going on? And I had to pull this person to the side and say, yo, what did I do? And it was in that, it was like, well, remember you did this, da, da, da. And I was like, and then you gotta not, you gotta keep your face. You can't be like, oh, well, that was three months ago. You can't even do that because you gotta make sure, you gotta also recognize that their, their emotions are still, they're still sore. Mm-hmm. They're still hurt, you know, because and and so you got to just be available to to just say, okay, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Next time, just come to me. But yeah, man, I've I've been there and I've had it happen to me. I've had it happen. Yeah, you know? I it, think I think as church as as leaders in any ministry, whether it's AV ministry, ushers, greeters, right. pastor, administrator, understanding that people are under you, and that these are leaders hold power or position mm-hmm. or a right. great res- a greater responsibility, right? right? So, but to flip it on its head, there are people who are just straight up mean and nasty. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Straight up, yeah. Ho- hold leadership positions, mm-hmm. horrible communicator, right? W- 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 and looking to embarrass you, yeah. looking to call you out in front of people, yep. looking, to, look, looking to gossip and all those things. And, and the word of God says what you do in the dark yeah. will come, come to the light. That's right. And That's right. those people who intentionally try to hurt people, you know, I've heard this saying many times, and I and I completely believe it that hurt people hurt people. Oh yeah, so true. Yeah, so basically, definitely. basically, they're looking for someone to take out their hurt on because they're hurting, right? Right. And in a, in a leadership position, there's no excuse for that. Anyone can have no. a bad day. Yeah, I've I've screamed at people and apologized. Right. You know, because I was right. like, ah, uh, you thought you because th- you, you're in the moment, especially if you're doing sound, you're in the mm-hmm. moment. Hey, put that down, move this. Right, you know, right, you try right. to make it happen, like, yeah, yeah. And you look at their yeah, face yeah. later, you're like, ugh, you got to go back. Yo, listen, yep, hurt your feeling. I didn't mean that to buy it. I was just in the exactly. moment. I apologize. Exactly. We good. We good. But we have to be sensitive. To right. the people as leaders, you have to be sensitive to the people around us. There are times when you gotta you gotta hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. Like yeah. if my breath is funky and you ain't telling me, uh yeah. <laughs> you will let me walk around me like no, you can't do that. Hi. No, you can't do that. Hello. Yeah, right. No. You look at me, no. you like, yo, bruh. Well, we'll tighten that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna be like, "How could you say yeah, that to me? I thought we were friends, and then you, you hurt my feelings, you crushed my emotions, and that's that's different." Yeah, yeah. Than someone intentionally trying to hurt somebody. So sure. let's take let's talk about the steps of healing. I found this book by Allison Cook. She's a PhD. Okay, and she talks about to define church hurt as abuse. Mm. It's, wow. a, it's a definition of abuse. Okay. You have to look at it as abuse. Right. And whether it's intentional, whether right. it's by accident, whether gotcha. it's your fault because you because you put someone on a pedestal, or you put you idolize somebody that happened to me. You put you put your pastor up there. Oh, he's close yeah. to God, you know, yeah. and you know, and you, you your world get crushed when you find out exactly. it is a person. Yeah, yeah, it exactly. is. They, they, they're just a person. Yeah. yeah. So she she has some scriptures, and I and and it's one of my favorite songs. Encourage yourself. Okay. In the, the Lord. Lord. That's right. Mm-hmm. Encourage, encourage yourself. Right. Give thanks and marvel at God's wonders. Mm-hmm. Colossians three sixteen. Yeah. You know. Growing humble and honest <clears throat> and self awareness, James right. um, four and eight. So <clears throat> these are reaffirming scriptures 
that allow yeah. healing to take place. Okay, right. 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 You have to allow healing to take place and you have to recognize it because it could be discouragement. It could be disappointment. It could be anger. It could be confusion. It could be denial of the pain. It could be right, um, right. And then this is the big one, false ideas about God. Yeah. You know, yeah. how did yeah. that happen? How would, how would God let that happen to me? Right, this, right, this, right, this, right, this, right, 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 definitely. Sometimes God has to put you in the grinder. I'm not saying all yeah. church hurt is this, but I'm right, saying right, right. sometimes God got to put you in the grinder because it prepares you. your pain mm -hmm. is not for you. Sure. It's for your sure. future. Right. And for someone else. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just like your testimony is for the test of another person. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. The same thing. Same thing. Yeah. So true. Yeah, man. Yeah, so my this, pain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to say. And so here's, here's the second step that she talked about. That's good. Separate church hurt from God's character. Mm. Who That's is good. God? That's good. What aspects of God's character are crystal clear throughout the Bible? Mm -hmm. If you feel busted and disgusted and beat, it up, beat up by your community church, the important point is to step back in a moment and rewind yourself on who God, who God is, exactly. right? Know God, know who God is as apart from your hurtful actions. Mm -hmm. God is love. Yeah. God he's, is for the poor in spirit. Yeah. Yep, yep. The grief stricken, the humble, the right. broken hearted, the peacemakers. Right. You know, God stands against the proud and the humble. God is love. Exactly. You know, first John four and seven. Yeah. God is love. So yeah. you have to separate it. Right. right. Literally separate it so you can recover. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And you know, it's funny because um it, it's almost like sometimes we have to think about allowing, we, or we have to more allow God to reframe. Because I think a lot of times uh, we look at things through the wrong filter. I think you started talking about how you, your perspective when we first began. And if, in order to allow God, his love and everything else to have that place of being in the forefront beyond or, or beside or, or instead of your your pain being in the forefront you've got to you got to get to a place where you can reframe you can put mm -hmm. that filter up and say I'm, okay i'm not i'm going to put this to the side because i know that you lord have the ability through your love through your joy through your through your characteristics mm -hmm. to make me better and right. then i can go back into the fray so you if, you know for the lack of a word or go back to the church and not be so wounded that I then can't take the next step to say, can I sit down and talk with you? Right. And but do it, but do it with love and not right. malice in your heart. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I think a lot of times, before we get into our next point, is mm -hmm. that it's a book by John Bevere. I forget the okay. name. Of it. It's about it's about offense. I think that's the beta Satan. The beta Satan, yes. I think, yeah, yeah. Listen, everyone needs to read this book. Yeah. You need to read this book. Yeah. Because yeah. it is so true. <laughs> it is so true. Yeah. You could, if, you, if you are partners with somebody or a friend with somebody who gets easily offended. Right. You walk around on eggshells around that person because- exactly. Everything offends them, and then right. what happens is the truth yeah. never, never gets to them. Exactly. So exactly. My God. If you can give someone a gift, someone who get, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to keep it a hundred. Mm -hmm. If you can give someone a gift that, yeah. from a person that you know that gets easily offended, get them that book. Right. Get them that book. Yeah. It will change your paradigm because of it is the beta Satan because yeah. it leads you down 
so many avenues in your mind. Mm. So you start to believe your imaginations. You do. You do. That's right. And all of a sudden, what happened is all in your mind. Exactly. You're having conversations in, 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 you know, in your head. Yep. And sometimes not in your head, sometimes out loud. I'll sometimes out loud. <laughs> as long as you talk, yeah. you, you know what he said? Yes, what he uh-huh. said. I, know, I can't that's stand right. him. You know what he that's said? Right. And I, that's, that's why, you know. Yeah. So if you had to, listen, anyone yeah. out there that, that do, and if you know that you struggle with offense, yeah. please, and I, I beg you, read this book. It will yeah. change your life because it, it puts things in a in a human and biblical perspective that you right. can actually understand, especially people, people of us who 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 work inside the multimedia ministry. Right. It's fast paced. Right. Yeah. And everything's yeah. happening now. Yeah. Not yesterday. No. Not coming. It's happening now. Right now. And sometimes That's so- you're in a pressure cooker. And you have to be thick-skinned in these ministries. Right, right, right. And it's funny, it's, um, John Breville talked about in that book, just a, a shorter kind of testimony, he talked about he had an offense. Um, he had prepared for like a year and did all the research. And what, I, I believe he was preparing to take the youth ministry in a totally different direction and was talking to his pastor. And, um, and his pastor was like, Every time we would meet with him, he was like, you know, wow, yes, yes, let's do it. All right, go go get it happen. Go make it happen. Go make it happen. And, he got, you know, we'll come back with more information and, okay, we're going to do this. And then, like, the last meeting, right before he was about to uh, initialize and get that thing moving, um, the pastor said, you know what, um, let's put that on hold. And because he had did all of this preparation in the background and was, like, moving forward and was right there, he got offended with his pastor mm. and the heavens closed up and he couldn't hear God anymore, but he was offended. So he went home and he talked, talked to his wife and said, you believe what he did? I can't. And that's one of the things that um, I'm, I'm so grateful for in our ministry. One of the things that we always tell you is never share your offenses with your, your spouse, never share your offenses with your spouse. Don't give any bad news. Don't even don't even give any praise sometimes because sometimes it can it can affect how that person sees the other person right. when that season is over. So I was offended with you, and so what his wife did was she said, "Well, you need to go pray." And so like for like I think six months, he I mean nothing was happening for him. He would go to church. He was being critical, everything. And then one day the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him. That's your pastor. I spoke to him. You need to repent. And he repented. And when he repented, the heavens opened up to him. And he went back to his youth team and he said, you know, guys, I want to just tell you. And he's, he he could have gone to them and, and the other time and said, you know what, our pastor just got angry. And he said, he said, no, and we, we just going to shut everything down. And I know it was what you wanted, but it's the pastor's fault. But this time he went back and he says, he said, guys, our man of God has heard from God and I, he's given, he has given us the green light to do this, to do this thing. But he also God spoke to him and saved us from making the biggest mistake we would have ever have made. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He flipped it around, and right. he, but he knew it was God. And sometimes that can be us. That can be us and stuck in that offense, stuck in that mm-hmm. place where I, I'm inflexible. I don't want to move. I don't want to, mm-hmm. I just want what I want. Right. And I and you know, I, in my personal testament, I was married to someone like that. They they lived in offenses. That was just who they were. So it wasn't like just walking on on, you know, you don't want to step on crackers. You you just in you just stood still most of the time. You just dodge and doodle. <laughs> Blinking would would have offended this individual. You know what I'm saying? Um, praise God they got delivered. But you know, you gotta we gotta be individuals that just are mindful of that, you know, especially like like you saw my brother in leadership. I got to be mindful that I can't allow myself to be offended, nor can I allow anybody or any of my words to cause an offense in someone else's right. life. Right, you have to see the Bible past. Says they Sometimes you got to see past people. Yeah. You yeah. see past people. I, I yep. think the most powerful thing, my mother, well, one of she told me a lot of powerful things. She told me 
you know, I was I was um mad at somebody and I was okay. like venting. Right. She said to me, you know, Jesus died for them too. Mm, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Reframe it. <laughs> do, do, do. You, you do know Jesus died oh, for them too. He didn't just die, die for you. That's good. Yeah. So are you perfect? Like take the beam out of your eye. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? So as leaders, we're, we're held to a higher regard. So let's move on to step three. I know we took a little um, detour, but Good. step three is recover your power. Mm. So okay. if you like experiencing church hurt and it, it can cause you to feel helpless, right. it can cause you to feel alone, it can cause you to just pull away from people, it, it, it'll cause you not want to go. Mm -hmm. Not want to be, you know, around, you know, around people who associate with that person or or that church or whatever. Yeah. In order to regain your power, you have to, and you need to set boundaries with those responsible for your pain. Not avoidance, but boundaries. You, you you're That's working right. your way through it, but you need a buffer. Yeah. To get you through the the agony of the healing process, kind of mm. like the Band-Aid, kind of like the alcohol. It's the healing process. It hurts. So you need to be around safe people, people who are, who are not going to put up with your mess. That's good. Call you, for your, good. call you out on your stuff. Right. But you can begin and, and, and stay in the process of healing. That's good. You know what I mean? You have to prioritize yeah. your yeah. emotional recovery. Right. Because it's emotional. Right. It ain't like someone cut, like slash your leg, like ah. No, no it's emotion. It hurts right. deep. It, your your right. blood pressure, your your anxiety. It, it 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 affects you. So you have to, even if you have to seek help outside the church. Sure. Yeah. If your yeah. church is a if your church is a is a is 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 a culture is toxic. It's crucial for your your healthy perspective for someone to to be outside of your environment. Sure. You know, seek a counselor, right. seek an advisor, a trusted advisor who can help you stay clear of the and keep you grounded in the midst of in the midst of it, so you can move past it. That's good. Yeah, you know what I mean. And the last step: reclaim your spiritual practices, meaning that your personal power, right, right, your prayer time, yeah, your word time, right, my what you watch, right, what you listen to, you exactly. know. Surround your surround your surround your spirit with things that will feed your spirit. That's the best right. way I can put it. That's surround good. your spirit with things yeah. that can feed your spirit, and you have to because I can always tell when I'm off. When I'm off, I know I, when I I, I I know what I'm listening to. Right. I, I got my Fifty Cent. I got my Biggie. I got right, you know. Right, I'm right. listening to all this yeah. stuff, and then I'm like, then I one day I'm talking. I almost curse. I'm like, I don't even curse. I'm right. like. How what? Because it, yeah. it's oh, been yeah. feeding my spirit. So I'm like, You've been ah, feeding it, right. What okay. you eat on is what you're going to come out, what's going to come out of you. Right. I got to change my diet. Yep. So you have to be mindful, mindful of that if you're in the middle of this, I, I'm telling you and I'm telling you now, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You're going to get through this. Yeah. But you have to use the tools that God gave you to get through this. Mm -hmm. Use the people that God put in your life that's trusted <clears throat> to, to tell you the truth. Right. Because sometimes you could be the problem, but you hurt, but you could right. be the problem. Right, right, it's right, right. Like, and vice versa. Yeah. If someone you say yeah. that person is wrong, where God says you have ought with your brother, you should go talk to them. Yeah, deal with it. That's right. And and and, and deal with it and then and, and, and get past it. What do you, what do you say, Pastor? I think everything that was said was 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 absolutely on point. Um, yeah, you know, church hurt attacks the soul. Any hurt attaches attacks your soul. You know, you know, the Bible spoke. The Bible tells us that, you know, when He made us, He made us a living soul, and your soul controls your emotions and your minds, uh, how you think, everything. And so, a lot of times, you've got the like what this woman's book is is pretty much kind of getting us to to get a position of is to step outside of being so dependent upon our souls 
mm. and depending upon the spirit. Mm. Get back connected with God. Put Make God the focus. As long as I make my inner the focus, then that's where I live. I right. live in a place of darkness. Right. But when I step out of my, my that environment of pain and that where I feel like I've some, it's just been so bad and I begin to see things the way God sees them. See that like your like your like your mom told you. See that person the way I see them. Right. I see them redeemed. I don't although this thing has happened to you and may have happened to others, that's still my child. Right. And we have to be able to as believers, we we don't want to be seen in the wrong light even when we do something wrong. But it's mm -hmm. sometimes we have a hard time shifting that where I, where I can be able to look at the other person right. the way God sees them. Because that's most important for us to be able to get over the hurdles that whatever life has thrown at us. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important. I mean, I love I love the way that she broke it down. You know what I'm saying? I think that that book, uh, The Bait of Satan, is an incredible, incredible book. Our pastor has some other books on a fence that you may want to get. Uh, pastor, uh, pastor John Tashola uh, got a ton of books on just how to get over your offense, you know, and it's amazing when you think of offense, it's offense. It really is offense. It's what now stands between the two of you. Yes, he or she said something negative, but you built the fence. Mm. You, you, there was a, there was a point in time where there was nothing there that would have blocked you from being able to get reconciliation with that individual. But right. because my emotions have been wounded, because I've chosen to focus more of my attention on that, all of that, all the while, the enemy is building a fence between the two of you mm. to keep you from getting that healing. See, we weren't created to be on this planet by ourselves. So of course the enemy wants to keep us in a fence because he wants to keep us separated from the person that can set us free or right. separated from the person that has the answer for where we are right now. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I love the fact that our miracles come from another person. God uses people. So of course, always think about that. When the enemy is trying to separate you from someone, what was the reason for that? He's trying to keep something, the blessing of God, the motivation of God, the word of God, from coming into your life. And so we have to look at life that way. Don't get caught up in our souls. I love what she said. You're gonna have to reconnect to the things of God, get back in your work, get back in that devotional time, get back in those moments where it was just you and him and allow him to strengthen you in those areas of weakness. So that way, when you step back in, you, you step back in a clean vessel and you're not walking in any kind of offense. You're not looking for a sorry. You're willing to say, if you never say sorry, if you never do anything again, I love God more than I love this offense. Right. And I yeah. want to maintain that position and that posture of having that heart and living my life with that heart because that's what's important. Because the, the, truth, of the, the truth of the matter is, the Bible says offenses will come. It tells, it warns me that mm -hmm. an offense will come. So then what's my posture when I get offended? Don't act dumb like this wasn't supposed to happen to me. Oh my God, how did this happen? Because exactly. Where did this come from? Come. No, but the Bible tells kind of, that's me. That's kind of like rent due. <laughs> it's like rent due. You know exactly. what you What? What? How did that happen? All this time, these 30 days, you ain't never asking for no rent? I don't understand. <laughs> I do not understand it. I am so Man. offended. <laughs> exactly. But you would even ask me for rent. What is wrong with you? What is wrong uh, with you? Can you go see, get you your lease? Not, you are man. You are not. A, oh no. You no well, no. Uh, see the devil. The devil's working overtime. Right. No 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's gonna come. It, it's, it, it's gonna come. It, exactly. So so when we go church hurt and we say conflict resolution, that's kind of right. like a corporate right. Um, conflict right. res resolution in yeah. in in the body is called um, um forgiveness <laughs> right exactly okay exactly. we're going to we're going to keep it we're going to keep it one one trillion yeah it's called yeah. forgiveness yeah sometimes 
you got to forgive yourself. Yeah. Been there. Sometimes you got to forgive other people. Yeah. But what, what, what forgiveness does, what we call the, uh, the Christendom term for conflict resolution. Right. This forgiveness is for you. Right. It's for right. no one else. It's for you. Right. And I'm telling you, when someone has, has, has hurt you, crushed you, done, done something real dirty to you, and I've been there, yeah. it was, and I'm still dealing with someone that crushed me mm. a few years ago, and I have to force myself to pray for them. Now wow. think about that. Wow. This person right. cost me thousands of dollars. Right, right. Embarrassed right. me in front of my, and like, I mean, I say aired me out. I'm talking like aired me out. Wow, bro. Wow. And I thought this, I thought this person was my friend. And I found out he wasn't my friend in the process. Right. So yeah. I had to remember what my mom told me. Well, she just died for them too. Right. Right. To this day, and I'm telling you, this is what I deal with. To this day, mm. I have to pray for this guy. Yeah. I don't like it. Oh, yeah, right. You're I right don't like that. praying for him. You're right about that, yeah. But that's my flesh. Right. My spirit says, mm -hmm. you have to forgive him. You got to forgive yourself. Right. You have to forgive him so you can move forward because... This was the illustration of, I'm, I'm showing you something. That guy that you thought was your friend was not your friend. And where you're going, right. you can't take him with you because he's not your friend. Sure. So sure. in order for me to sever this relationship, I let him be himself. Mm, okay. That's right. On your, on your dime. Right. I let him embarrass you on your dime to sh let to show you the lengths right. that this person would go right. to crush That's you That's good. for for ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. What would he do with with a million dollars? Yeah, 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 bro. So power and money is this really? magnifies who you are right, so it right. Really does. and yeah. and in that i learned who was my friends mm -hmm. i also learned that i could do what he did right i learned something about myself but it hurt me Good. i have i have to continue to pray for him right because i could complete I, to let you know is like i'm not completely over it Cause I still exactly. get pissed off about it when I talk about it. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't even go down that avenue. I go like, all right, God, I know, I know, I forgive him, but I know it's a battle within. I got that. So yeah. I'm just letting everyone know that I'm not negating that you're gonna go, oh, God, forgive him. Oh, kumbaya, Lord is good. No, there's certain <laughs> things you got, you yeah. gonna have to push through. Some things, yeah, some things you gotta work out, bro. You got the, this, like the Bible tells us to work out our our salvation with fear and trembling, there's still some soul issues that you got to work out. You could right. get, you know, we could, we could, we could do the Christian thing and say, Oh, just cast it on God. And that is Bible cast it on God. But you still, if you're still contending with it in your head, then you, it needs to be just cast it. It needs, it, you got to really go to God and say, God, I, I this, we got to work this out. I'm having it's, a hard go. time. it's not going anywhere. Right. And it's it's because we're holding on to it, but mm -hmm. it still needs some it still needs to be removed. Right. It's it's the it's the it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the reliving of the pain. Cause sometimes exactly. you you relive it. Yep. Like you yep. relieve it in your mind and your body. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So you feel it. You feel it. So exactly. I'm saying this to people out there who are listening, listen, church hurt is real, forgiveness yeah. is the truth. And yeah. to move forward, just take these steps that we talked about, sure. um, and to, to to get through it because it's a real thing. And and and, and certain yeah. cert, some church hurts are all just deal with molestation and all mm -hmm. kinds of things. So yeah. I'm not negating it. I'm just saying right. that with God, anything 
is possible. Nothing's impossible when God's involved. That's right. All right. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Before yeah. we get out of here, we got a special guest. <laughs> you got a special guest. You, let me go get him. Let me go get him. Let me go get him. <laughs> Hilarious. We do have a special guest for you guys. Uh, let's uh, get ourselves positioned and ready for uh, our brother. Our brother with the, uh, with the most. <laughs> He's had some time. He's got his COVID beard on. That's oh, Lord have mercy. Hey, Pastor Brown here. Hey. Pastor Brown, Pastor Brown. Pastor How you Brown. doing there, Pastor? Pastor, kill it, kill it. Well, hey, you say you're kill it, kill it. How you say your name? Caleb? Caleb? Caleb. 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 Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Good to know God. I didn't think y'all boys are going to bring me back. Oh, uh, no. Printer, oh, printer called me. He said uh, he want me to do that 39 29 second thing. <laughs> I said, the bro. 39 29 second. Yeah, 39 yeah, 29 30, second. 30 I said, ain't minutes, no such thing as 39 20. It's the 20 or 29. Gone. It's what it's That's called, what boy. 30 seconds and gone. 30 seconds and gone. He gave me the question. He gave you the questions? He gave me the questions for you, boy. Oh, you doing 30 seconds and gone no, with I'm, me? I'm, 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 I got questions for you, boy. He said, <laughs> he said. Hilarious. This is going to be good. He said, oh, uh, you got to tell that boy, because I not, there's certain things I just can't say to him. He said, he said, no, 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 no. And I got to ask him these things. OK. OK. OK, I'm so, ready. So how do, how do I do it? Uh, just ask the questions. I just ask the questions. Ask the questions. And All right. Then he put it. He put it in the in the, in the, uh, the numerical order. Okay. So that means, that means one after another. <laughs> yes, he means one after. <laughs> he said one after. I said he said one after another. One after another. Oh, that's funny. You All gonna right, start so I'm with ready. the first? Yes. I'm I'm ready. You start oh, with I can't the first. Hear. My ears ain't working. Uh, start with number one. Number I'm one. ready. He said, Uno, like the card Uno. game. <laughs> like the card game. I'm betting 4499 today, boy. Now, question number one here. Name, let me see if I get my glass right here. Name your favorite chicken spot. My favorite chicken spot. Favorite mm. chicken. Got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. But yeah, you right about that, got to have a chicken thing, yeah. My favorite chicken mm. spot. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna have to say Popeyes. Pop <laughs> Popeyes. <laughs> you went yeah. for that sandwich too, boy. You let that sandwich do. It's all right. You let that no, no. You you, you, you know, know what? Now that now that you said that sandwich, I I see now this is this is a toss up. Yeah, you got that Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A, brother. Chick Fil A. What's right? Chick Fil A. Chick -fil -A. Is it Chick Fil A? It's Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Chick -fil -A. Chick -fil -A. I Chick -fil -A. like that there. It's a good Chick dance called the Chick Fil A. They flayed it. But I do like Popeyes. You I, like I, Popeyes, I, so you like so you you, you um. I'm you I'm go. stuck between a rock and I'm stuck between a hen you egg. Confused. Yes, sir. <laughs> but chicken is chicken. It's how you season it, boy. Cause Mabel sure can cook a batch of chicken. Uh, you got you got to bring some next time you come. You know? Yeah, yeah. Pictures of chicken. That's all I got for you. Pictures of chicken. <laughs> Number two. Yes, sir. He said, "Um, let me get my glass of here. When you pray, you mm -hmm. pray all your needs or you walk around." Uh, it depends on the intensity. Um, I, I start on my knees. For the most part, it's the knees. But if, but if it's but if it's intense, you a holy man. You a holy around. man. You a holy man. Yeah, you a holy man. Okay, I can't I, I can't get down there no more, boy. I play on the couch. <laughs> can't get up. The, I sit on the couch, boy. I sit on the couch and I said, Lord, help me. That's Ain't what I do. Wrong with that. Ain't All right, you said um number three. He said okay. uh, okay. uh, give me a glass of him. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right, this is a good one. He right. said, pick one. Okay. HBO Max, Netflix, or Disney Plus? HBO Max. 
HBO Max. Why you bit that there? You know, why you bit that? Kind of expensive there. Kind of expensive. Uh, HBO Max is actually cheaper. Cheaper <laughs> than Disney? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm mercy, because you know, I love me some. I love me some Donald Duck, boy. Man, now listen, listen. I am a Marvel I love me some Donald fan, Duck. but um, mm-hmm. HBO. I, I mm-hmm. like it, man. I'm getting the well, movie. HBO, HBO Max, HBO Max, HBO Max. I, I watched yeah, that man. Judas and the, the Messiah thing the other oh, day. Oh, that was great, man. I was mad as a man. I was mad as a wet hen to the whole movie. Man. I was like, I almost cussed it. <laughs> I called him I a gotta, mother, father, stay home. son of I a biscuit eater. That's what I called him, mother, father, son of a biscuit eater. That's what I said. Said it to his face. I That's understand, Pastor. I do. I, I said it right I there. The I said it right there on the screen. Mother, father, son of a biscuit eater. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. I said it with intensity. With intensity, intensity, boy. Did you, I you got it. up. I meant to that thing. I, I got up slow. I got up slow, but I got up. Okay. Number four. Mm. Number four. What book? Other than the Bible, the B I B L E okay. is imparted on your life. Boy. What book? Yeah, what book? The thing you read, you know, got pages and stuff. I don't know where this boy come from. I don't know where the book is. <laughs> the book of Proverbs. The, no, I said, I said, no, no, no. You said pick one. I said, what book other than the Bible? Has oh. imparted your life. This boy don't oh, pay no attention. Now, he don't pay no attention. Is, I ain't say I ain't say attention. I said he don't pay no attention. That's what no I said. Tension. No attention. Okay. Like, um, this is probably mm-hmm. gonna. Mm-hmm. There was a book called The Temple Builders. The Temple wow. Builders. Yeah. Temple. This this I met this brother years ago, mm-hmm. and um, I had the opportunity to actually to, to create the cover for this book. When I read this book. From mm. cover to cover. The temple builder. Bar, par, par, none. Nothing stands as good as that book. Mm. So, I'll send you a copy. Mercy. i get you a copy. I, get I felt copy. the Holy Ghost. I felt it running down my spine, boy. Come on. I'll get you I a felt copy. But the, the, the oil of Anna running down my beard, boy. I felt it running, just running, that's leaking. It. That's just it. leaking down my That's beard. it. Leaking. Just Lord. I thought you were going to say ABCs and one, two, three. I, I did you <laughs> Well, you took nah, so nah. long. I wasn't, know, I, 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 some, I wasn't. Some I wasn't. I wasn't quite sure what you were gonna say there, boy. Okay. Nah, nah, we good. Okay, we got number. And the thing is, oh, this is the last one right here. This thing okay. going real fast. Y'all gotta bring me back. I'm gonna have a yeah, yeah, we do. I'm having a good time here, boy. All right, <laughs> all right. Time. He said, "Let me see." Okay. He said, "As a child, which one of these cereals speak to your heart?" Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. Cheerio, Frosted Flakes, Rice Crispy, Snap Crapper Pop. Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. Roar. The tire. That's Roar. Right. Tony. <laughs> yeah, my it. kids love that Tony, boy. Yeah. Uh, eat that thing, run around the house. I couldn't stand for them. Flakes. Them, them, them kids be running around getting all kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. All yeah. kind of. But that's sugar. That sugar. Hyper. Something else, boy. <laughs> that sugar, man. I'm trying to. I swear, I quit. Yeah. I swear, yeah. I swear. I said, I swear, I quit. You understand? You hear me? What I'm saying? Ah, uh, yes, sir. You yes, hear me? sir. I can't hear you. Sure you say? Yes, yes sir. sir. I heard you. You hear? You say you heard me? I heard you. All right. I think that's all I got. So, okay, sir. I just want to say thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. For thank being. you for having me. I really appreciate you. Prentice, you want? Okay, we go get him. Hold on. Go, go, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the plan. Thank you, sir. Bless you. <laughs> that was a good pastor. And coming back to the microphone. Man, this dude crazy, brother, man. Break this. This dude what crazy, up, man. Pastor Brown. You got uh, you, 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 you to gotta warn me next time, brother. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. That's, 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 the, that's the beauty of entertainment. The beauty of entertainment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs of all ages, I hope you had a good time and enjoyed today's topic, Church Hurt, and the comedy relief with my brother, Pastor Brown, (laughs) who who shall return at some other time during during the course of our our dialogue going through church. And we hope that you you gleaned from it. We hope that you walked away with something you could could place into your bag and use. And lastly, we hope that you were blessed. And... 
do us a favor, share this, impart this to someone, yeah. and let someone else let someone else get some healing as well. Exactly. And we're gonna do like we all do all the time. Keep God first in everything you do. Yeah. And we we'll see you next time. If you will. On the Church Sound Park. Love you a lot. Every service, they are there. Every conference, they are there. Trustworthy, professional, and faithful. They're the first to arrive and the last to leave. They are our essential workers. Hey pastor, if this does not describe your media team, then we can help. If you want your team to rise to the occasion, let us train your team. Partner with Invisible Ministry. Do you want to partner with IVM? Come on and partner up. You can contact us at 757-768-5136. We do new installations and upgrade existing equipment. No church too small, no church too big. Give us a call for a consultation at 757-768-5136.